Hey guys, Pastor Artie here with your man in a minute today. You know, in Philippians 4, 8, it says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Now, the reason why I say that today is because, you know, in the news media today, we got a lot of people that just sow a lot of, you know, lies and fear into the people's hearts. That's not what God wanted. He never said, I want, to, I want you to live in fear and doubt. He said, I want you to live according to Philippians 4 8. You know, it's amazing because I always hear of political parties that one side tells you all the good that's going on and all the benefits that we've been reaping lately and then there's the other side they have nothing good to say you know they say that you know your your bonuses that you guys got were just crumbs that your wages are stagnating this is what i heard today you know i heard i heard the uh the leader of the Democratic Party Pelosi, she goes that your wages are going to stagnate. You guys aren't going to get any more. You, you know, it's just a, a hoax. You guys have been duped. You're stupid, basically is what she's saying. And I was like, you know what? Let's weigh that against, you know, all the things that news, some news media say and, and what the president says on, on how things have changed and what his peers have said about how things are changing in the positive. You know, that's why I was looking at this scripture. And it says, finally, brother, whatsoever things are honest or true, whatsoever things are just, again, righteousness, putting things in their right perspective, whatsoever things are pure, that means without any kind of sowing of discourse or, or lying, whatsoever things are lovely, you know, when I think about getting more money, that's a lovely thing to me. You know, I like it, you know, especially on a fixed income. I don't get very many raises. Matter of fact, for the past, I don't know, six, six or eight years, I haven't seen a raise until just recently I finally got a raise, which is kind of nice. I like that. You know, it, it helped me out. You know, it's not a lot, you know, maybe $30, $40 a month. But you know what? That's a lot. That's a lot for a fixed income guy. You know, uh, whatsoever things are of good report. A good report. The nation's doing great. You guys are making more money. Your taxes are going to be easier. We're going to stop illegal immigration best we can. We're going to set things right. Good report. As opposed to, well, he's just going to destroy our nation. Uh, he's giving you crumbs. Your wages are stagnated. He doesn't know how to negotiate with the North Koreans. He should do things differently. He's just been duped. He's a dummy. He looks like an orangutan. Come on, guys. His, his daughter is a, is a C word. Come on, guys. You know, you got people like Whoopi and, 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 and Kathy Griffin who showed Trump being beheaded or shot in the head. Wearing a t-shirt. I saw that on Whoopi the other day. How is that a good report? That's not. That's, that's divisive and destructive to your minds and our country. That's not cool. We are a nation founded on, under God. And the thing is, you know, I had people say, well, I've never heard a Christian talk like this. Well, that's because, you know what, uh, President Trump finally took the gag off of our mouths and gave us a voice as pastors. And we need to preach the truth. You know, the truth hurts. You may not like to hear it, but you're going to hear it. You know, we didn't like it when Jesus said, oh, thou bunch of whitewashed sepulchers, you're beautiful on the outside, and then you're full of rotten bones. Does that any different from me saying, you know what? The left is going to keep you in bondage. The right is going to bring you hope. Why? Because you either get right or get left. And if you get left... Don't worry about it. You don't have to worry. It's a, you better get yourself some asbestos underwear. It's going to be like swimming in jalapeno juice for most of you. I pray that you get saved. I pray that you get to the right. I pray that you get in the right frame of mind. Jesus loves you. I love you. You may not believe it. You may have 
words to the contrary. But you know what? The Bible also says, touch not my anointed. So if you're going to judge me, I hope you're ready to be held to a higher accountability like I am. Because as a teacher, as a pastor teacher, I am held to a very high accountability, more than you'll ever be. You don't have a lot to explain for. I got to explain for every word that comes out of my mouth. Every time I teach somebody, I'm, I'm liable for what they learn. And I want you guys to learn the best, the best of God's word. Why? Because I study God's word. You know, one person told me, well, I go to church. I never heard my pastor talk like that. Well, maybe it's time you find another church. Maybe it's time you leave that mess and stop listening to those tickling words and those, you know, the little sugar-coated tongue, all because he wants you to tithe to the church. You got to look and see, is he all about money? Does he always talk about his books or his tapes or all the things he's done, you know, his music, blah, 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 blah. To me, that's prideful. God gave you those songs. God gave you those words. God gave you those stories. God gave them to you. They're not your soul, right? So why are you making a profit off of them? You shouldn't. Freely you've been given, freely you should give. That's why you don't have to pay for rock ministries. I don't ask a penny of you guys. I don't want your money. I don't need your money. I'm trusting God for everything that we have. And God meets the need when he wants to, when he has to. He'll meet the need. He doesn't leave me out. Whatsoever things are good, honest. Good report. I believe those things. I don't believe what I hear. I don't believe what people say. And trust me, I've had a lot of naysayers on Facebook that have just like tried to run me into the ground. But I just come on back with, you know what, I'm praying for you. I'm praying that God will remove the scales from your eyes, that your eyes will be open and your ears will pop open, that you'll be able to hear and see what is true, what is honest, what are, what's just, what's pure, what's lovely, what's of good report. And if you find virtue in that and praise, then think on those things. Today, family, you gotta be careful. We live in a world that are, that's so decisive, I mean divisive, not decisive. They're, they're decisive in the fact they want to drag you down and keep you under their thumb. Make you think and vote the way they want you to. You know, I just had to comment on a guy's post. He's running for, um, for state assembly. And he was telling me how this other gal who just happens to share my last name wants more of the same that Governor Brown is putting out there. You know what? As a namesake, I'm actually sad. I'm actually sad for her that she can have such a strong name like Cervantes, but yet she's a puppet. She's a harmless little lamb just following along, following the goat of all things. You know, that's what happens when sheep are led to the slaughter. They have this one goat that they put in the herd. It's called a Judas goat, kind of an apropos name for the goat, right? A Judas goat. He's a betrayer. And he leads these goats, I mean the sheep, into the filing pen, into the slaughterhouse. And then the goat is sent off one way and all the sheep are sent on another path. Narrow is a path that leads to righteousness and salvation and broad is a path that leads to destruction. They all file into this little path and they're destroyed, they're killed. All because of one thing, they followed the goat, followed a Judas goat. What goat are you following today? The goat, are you following the shepherd who gives you an honest word, a just word, a pure word, a lovely word, a good report? Or are you following one that just gives you naysayers? Oh, well, Trump doesn't know what you're talking about. He's a womanizer. He's a liar. He does this. He does that. You know what? It's great pointing fingers. But remember, when you point a finger, you got three fingers pointing back at you. So you better be ready to stand accountable for what you say. I have to stand accountable for what I say. And I pray every day that when I do these videos that I'm saying the right things to you, that I'm encouraging you to take a stand, that I'm encouraging you to look deep within yourself, look in your heart and examine where God really is. Is he here or is he here? If he's up here, he's doing you no good right here. I know people that can memorize the Bible, they can memorize scripture, they got the whole Bible in their head. But you know what? That 18 inches between there and here has never made the connection. They don't understand why 
they say what they say because they don't know what they say because they don't understand it because the, the heart is the point of understanding, not the brain. You know, I didn't learn anything in school until I really loved it. When I loved it here, it all sunk in up here, but it has to start here. Today, family, don't be confused by your churches or your pastors or those in authority over you that tell you certain things unless you check it out against the Word of God. Is it pure? Is it of good report? Is it holy? Is it honest? You know, I hate to say it, but I'm sure there are Republicans and Democrats alike. Man, you put them in the same room, you ask them one question, some are going to tell the truth, some are going to lie, and I wish they were Pinocchios because I'd love to see that nose grow. Me, I don't have that problem. My nose is already big. But I'm not going to lie to you. God's word is sure. It's true. What he says he's going to do, he's going to do. And there's going to come a time when you're not going to be able to escape it. You're either going to give in to the devil or you're going to give in to the Lord. And if you give in to the Lord, guess what? You're going to die. I guarantee it. You're going to die at the hands of those that don't believe God. It's called the tribulation period. And Paul even said, we'll see it. We'll see that. I don't know if we'll experience the, the horror of it, but we're going to see it before it happens or as it happens. Bet your pastors never told you that. They're saying, you're going away in a rapture. I got news for you. Only the Jews are going in the rapture because that's what the scripture says. If you study the word and understand it and know how to rightly divide it, then you would understand you're going to see the abomination of desolation. You're gonna see the wars and rumors of wars. You're gonna see where people say, well, Jesus is over here, Jesus is over there, this. Don't believe them. It's not true. When God comes back, he'll come back for his children with a shout of a, of a mighty angel and a trumpet will sound in his coming. And guess what? If you die before then, you go straight to heaven. If you're a born again believer, guess what? You go straight to heaven. You, you occupy a mansion in heaven and you will come back with Jesus in the clouds to bring those that are supposed to come back up here, the Jews first. What a glorious day that'll be. And then those that are martyred in Christ, guess what? We go to be with Jesus automatically. What, you think you're gonna take this body? You think I'm gonna take this, this, this body? Even though this guy is good. But you know, you think you're gonna take this body? No, it's corruptible flesh. It can't exist in heaven. I really wish there would be a pre-rapture to what's going to happen. Because if that was the case, you would find a lot of dead bodies of Christians lying everywhere. Moms, dads, babies, kids, all lying around. But you know what's sad? There's going to be a day when and if that happens, that there's going to be churches that are going to be full. Matter of fact, they don't even have to put out a help one and sign for a pastor. It's time for pastors and it's time for the congregations to get up and be PWAs, people with an attitude, a righteous attitude, a righteous attitude for Christ, to see those that don't know him saved. Get out there, preach the gospel. Don't start bad-mouthing and pointing fingers at everybody just because you don't like what they say. Let it be water on a duck's back. Let it roll off. And if you just can't handle it, you know, if it's too hot, get out of the kitchen. Unfriend those people. It's okay. You can unfriend Artie. Artie's not going to be hurt. Trust me, I will not get hurt if you unfriend me. I just know that you don't want to hear the truth. So Linda and I are really praying for you guys. I just got done talking to her at lunch. We're really praying for you guys because we really do love you. We really do care about you. We want you to know that you should think on the things that God has told us to do. Stop listening to the reports that you hear of how bad things are, what the president's doing is bad, what kind of a character he is. You know what? Everybody that's involved in politics, let me tell you, look at the word politics and you'll understand. What is politics? It's a compound word. Poly, which means many, and ticks, which are blood-sucking insects. So that should give you a real good clue as to what the real agenda of politics are. Now, I don't see that with our president today, but I saw it with our past presidents, Obama, Clinton, the Bushes. I've seen it all. 
You know, my first president when I was born was Eisenhower that I, that I was born under. And it wasn't until the next one that I really knew who it was, you know. <laughs> but guys, we can't allow this world to take control of our lives. We can't allow the garbage that's going in to be garbage coming out. We should allow that talk to go in and go out. Not go in and come out, but go in and go out. That's what God wants to do. And when you practice Philippians 4, 8, look it up for yourself. See if I'm lying. I'm telling you the truth. God's telling you what to believe. This is what you should listen to. So for those of us that are bringing you the gospel, we're doing it out of love because we love you guys. We want you to learn that God's word is yes and amen. There is no middle ground. There's no gray area. You know, just like, just like this, I'm getting ready to spray paint a, a fountain and this is gray. There's no gray area in God's word. But yet, his word to all of us is like this one, transparent. It's not, there's nothing hidden in it. You can see right in it and through it. And when you look through it, guess what you see? You see the goodness and the grace of God. So today, family, stop allowing this world to dictate how you think and what you think. God gave you that mind. Use it. Put it to good use. Allow Jesus to bless you, to keep you, to make his face shine upon you, to let his countenance surround you. And in that you'll be blessed. So Linda and I are praying for you. We love you guys. We love you guys. And we hope you have a blessed weekend. Happy Friday today. And I hope that your weekend goes amazing. And if you're going to a church that's not going to teach you the truth, I really do pray that you would seek God and say, is this really the place for me? Because if they're not telling you the truth, one way to always check a pastor, scripture has to, uh, scripture always is corrected by scripture. It's always affirmed by scripture. You know, in Philippians 4, 8, it tells you what to think on. There's other places in the Bible that tells you what to think on too. And it's the same thing. Scripture agrees upon Scripture, always. And you'll know a good pastor because he always used Scripture to agree with Scripture. You know, the Bible also says, so as a man thinks, so is he. What are you putting in your head? Because if you're putting junk in, then you're junky. If you're pure and honest and loving, then you have the, you have the attributes of God coming and showing through you. Jesus said, I love you. Now be imitators of me, as I'm imitator of the Father. Don't let things go to your head. Think on the good and reject the negative. We love you guys and we'll talk to you real soon. God bless you.